Hi everyone. So today we're going to be looking at the process of speciation. So speciation is when a species splits and separates into two um, separate species. So it's really um, a good example of evolution happening. So it's a new species actually forming. So as I, as I said there, you know, that sums it up. Um, that may be a definition you want to write down if you want to pause this. And just so you're aware, the main type of speciation that we focus on is called allopatric speciation. So allopatric speciation is when the species um, gets separated by a geographical barrier, um, populations rather get separated by a geographical barrier, and that's what leads to speciation happening. So we're going to have a look at that now. So what I want you to imagine here in these diagrams is that that is a population, okay? And... As you can see there, there is naturally existing variation in the population. So I've just represented their blue dots and red dots to indicate that there's a variation within this population of whatever animal it is. So right now, they all live in the same area. They can easily um, interbreed and so on. But what happens in allopatric speciation is there is some sort of geographical barrier. So I've just drawn a mountain here, um, so that could a mountain range forming could act as a barrier um, between populations. It could be a river forming, it could be a desert forming, it could be, you know, seas changing, isolating islands, anything like that, basically, where the populations get separated, that's what's needed. So as a result of that, we say the populations have been reproductively isolated. So when they're separated, they've got different variation just due to variation and now they are isolated from one another. So that means an individual in this population can't easily interbreed with individuals in this population, or probably not at all. So then over here, I've drawn a sun on this side and rain clouds on this side. And what that represents is um, when populations are isolated, they'll be exposed to different conditions. Therefore, natural selection will operate on them differently. So if natural selection is operating on them differently, new traits will be selected for, and also mutation will happen differently. So they'll get different mutations as well, which again, selection may or may not operate on. Um, and as you can see in the picture, I've drawn this population getting more red dots, this population getting more blue dots, and that's representing them becoming more different over time. And at that point, a new subspecies may be forming. Just as a recap, we looked at subspecies quite a few weeks ago. A subspecies is when the individuals, um, when, is when they're still part of the same species. They can still breed and make fertile offspring if put together, but they begin to look really quite different and they probably won't choose to breed if you do put them together, but they are still technically capable of doing so. But over a long, long period of time, eventually, the differences may become so great that they can no longer interbreed and make fertile offspring at all. So even if we introduce this population and this population together, it wouldn't be possible for them to breed and make offspring that can breed themselves. At that point, a new species has arisen. Okay, so the basics of it are there's a population with variation, the population gets separated, as they adapt to their new environments differently, their allele frequencies change and therefore they gain more differences. And after enough time, they are no longer capable of breeding to make um, fertile offspring which, with each other, meaning a new species has formed. Now, this is a really, really slow process, just to be clear. For example, the short-beaked echidna, which is a species found um, in Australia, um, is also found on the island of New Guinea, okay? New Guinea and Australia separated 8,000 years ago. So there were echidnas in Australia and echidnas in New Guinea. They were separated by the geographical barrier of an ocean. But nowadays it is still possible for a New Guinea short-beaked echidna and an Australian short-beaked echidna to breed and make fertile offspring. They are separate subspecies, but they have not become a separate species yet. So it takes a long, long time for these adaptations to happen. Okay, but like I say, Look at your slides on speciation as well, look at the Edrolo video, but make sure you're really clear about what's happening in this allopatric speciation process. So one more time, there's a population with variation, 
they get separated by a geographical barrier, we say they're reproductively isolated. Due to mutations and natural selection, they adapt differently to the environment, and we say that the allele frequencies change. And as enough differences come through over time, the species eventually lose the ability to breed and make fertile offspring. Okay, so that's the basics of allopatric speciation. Make sure you have a go at the work on Google Classroom. And if you do need any help, I will be available on Zoom all the way through the lesson. See ya.